like a good book, we're leather bound. Leather is a staple of fantasy. It might not be the first thing we think about when it comes to what we like about particular models, but if you think to your collection of models, I'm sure about 80% of them have leather somewhere. Straps, armor, lining, hats, scraps. They may not be the main draw, but they are there, which I'd say makes it pretty important to know how to paint. Continuing with my Beastmen army, the theme for this one is obviously leather. And I've got a good selection of the little guys to show it off on. Heroes, mages, and some raiders to give us a good variety of leather. Of course I'll be showing off a simple way to do it, and a more advanced way. Then share some color recipes to give our leather some variations. To me there's one absolute thing that makes a nice leather, and that's a bad leather. More specifically, a worn and textured leather. It'd be easy to just put down a layer with a wash and highlight in an appropriate leather color and call it a day, but texture is what will really sell it, even when keeping things simple. Only a couple of colors are needed to make the effect work from a black or dark gray base coat. I'm starting with a dark gray, and before any color even gets added, we start by adding the texture. Like a zenithal, we can set up the textures in black and white and color them after. I really like to use white ink for this because it's already nice and thin and stays wet on the brush a little longer with some medium added. Then around the edges of the leather I intend to paint, just add scratches and marks, using the tip of the brush to just randomly scratch back and forth around those edges. But also place a few larger scratches near the center of the areas too, going over a few spots a couple of times to get brighter patches. And what that gives me is a texture underlayer instead of a zenithal underlayer. And that's all the technical part of it, done and in the bag. Now we just have to give it some color. The basic idea is I want a transparent brown. There's a few ways to get that. These Liquitex transparent browns are a pretty simple way. So are washes and contrast or speed paints. But even if you don't have those, just your favorite leather brown paint or ink diluted with a bit of medium will also work. I'm in an experimental mood, so I'm going with a transparent raw umber from Liquitex since I've not used it much and want to see how it goes. The main idea will be the same with all of them though, just paint a layer and let it dry. Then paint another layer, pause for music, and another layer. Keep adding layers until you get the color density you want from the brown. The more you add, the more difference between the black and the white flattens out. But because that starting contrast was so strong, that texture should always be visible. And that's it. Paint some texture over primer and just layer transparent layers until it looks like leather. The advanced method, again the focus will be on the texture, but a layered texture that will change colors a bit to represent the underlayers of the scratched leather. This one will start like most colors start, and that's with the base coat. My normal procedure will be to take the brown I want the overall leather to be, and then add a bit of black to darken it and give it some opacity if it happens to be a translucent brown. Then just give my leather an overall base coat of that mix. The next step is to take the base without the black mixed into it and create a layer from it, but by using stippling to get an overall texture. So I just have to think of it as a normal layer, but instead of spreading it out onto the model with a back and forth stroke, I'm adding it to the leather with pokes of the brush. But the same rules would apply. Create more density near the light source and keep away from edges. Now I'm going to start to introduce a little bit more color, and wildly enough, skin tone colors are actually really good for this since they're comprised of white and earth pigments usually. So they'll lighten the brown a bit, but keep some of the saturation. And I'm not mixing in much. I don't want the difference between this layer and the last one to be too extreme. Because with my fine brush, I'm going to add many, many, many scratches, starting along the edge of the leather, but eventually starting to cross over the highlight points. And like with the stippling, create a density that trails off to the sides. Adding a bit more of the skin tone to the brown, it starts to go a bit tan and orange, which is what I want. This lighter orange highlight will end up getting focused along the edges like an edge highlight to start, but adding some heavy dots here and there to create a broken pattern along that edge. 
Then with a fine point, I extend some of those dots out to be a bit larger and add a scratch into the leather from it. For the last highlight, just a bit more of the flesh color so it's still a bit orange and not too light. Then with the fine point again, I just dot the thickest parts of the edge lines as if those were the epicenter of the wear and tear and the bare leather is showing through. When we think of leather, we think brown. But what is brown? It's not like it's anywhere on the color wheel. At least not initially. But when we start to darken things up a bit, what we start to see is orange start to turn into that familiar brown. So how does this help us? Well, now we can start turning the color wheel a bit to one side or the other, and that'll help us find our brown alternatives. Red and purple. It seems obvious when you think of it because they're next to orange on the color wheel. So when looking for leather colors that aren't brown, it makes sense to stay in the neighborhood. Starting with the red brown. There's actually plenty of options for getting this since there are quite a few earthy pigments out there in the wild. Both burnt sienna and red oxide are pretty good ones. But you can darken up with black first to make even more brownish. But the simple trick is just to add some red into whatever your classic brown recipe is. So because I used burnt umber on the last one, if I do the same again but add some red first before adding the black, we get a brown that's a bit more red in tone, which following my advanced method just gets base coated, then the brown red mix gets stippled. When it comes to what skin tone to mix in, in this case a pinkish tone would just be adding more red into the mix. So if that were the case, we might as well just use white. But a more golden or pale skin will have more yellow pigment in it, which will bring back that red into the orange territory like I want. So I do all my texturing with that, which should give me a nice pale orange for scratches, which fit well with the red leather. One last thing to remember for every step of the way and with every color is that the simple method rules still apply as well. So since I was finding my color wasn't quite as red as I wanted, I thinned down some red brown and did a nice light glaze over the complete leather, adding more of that red tint into it. This could have been done earlier if I wanted to keep my scratches more orange as well, but just really push the red of the leather. For the purple leather, there's really not that many wild options, so I'm forced to make my own. It could be as simple as just adding some dioxazine purple to my brown for a purple tint. Though since we know blue and red make purple, I could experiment by adding some blue and red in differing amounts to get the results I want too. But for now, I'll keep it easy and just use the Diox purple with my brown and black for the first layer, and just the brown and purple for the stipple layer. For the initial scratches on purple, I find it's best to just add a tiny bit of white to the mix, because those would represent faint abrasions to the leather and not full on scratches. So just a bit of white to keep things purple for now for this first layer, before shifting colors again for the deeper scratches in a bit. As for what to add to get those lighter scratches, that becomes a bit more problematic, because a golden skin uses yellow, and yellow with purple just makes a kind of muddy brown. But the underlayers should still have a bit of a beige or orange tint to them. So for this, instead of trying to mix to get the orange, I'm just going to add orange to some white anyway and then use that to lighten the purple leather for the textures and highlights along the edges and scuffed up areas. The last color isn't actually a color at all because what kind of bad boy wouldn't be complete without some black leather? And the best part about it is that it's already got a head start with the black base coat from the priming layer. But the fun thing about black is, is it doesn't need to be black. Most animals we call black because of black fur don't actually have black fur, but a really, really dark brown fur. So just to put the same amount of effort in for no reason, I added a bit of burnt umber into the black and stippled that over the leather first. Okay, the real reason I wanted to add a bit of brown to the black is because I wanted that brown to mix into the golden skin for our highlights. So the idea behind black leather isn't that it doesn't have saturation, but that the saturation is contained in the scratches and wear all on its own. So once I have the black with a bit of brown mix and my golden flesh, process is the same for the rest, just adding scratches in different layers all the way up. These just happen to be my staple alternative colors for leather when I need multiple leather colors. But the truth is you can make any color a leather. Blue, green, and yellow, they all work too. The trick is to add that texture and or separate out the top layer's color 
and the color of the inside of the cracks. So while I don't condone it, should you want to do a pink leather, give it a shot and I bet you could. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one or just other fun things to do with painting miniatures. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.